Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Dow Jones Utility Average crossed over the gold spot price in U.S. dollars. And it's not that complex, although it looks complicated. I'm, I'm going to try to show you what I'm pointing out here. And we're going to come back and reference this chart when we listen to the, I'm going to term it bold pony because this is this guy who, the, honestly, I don't know where he came from, but he's featured often on Silver Doctors. And I think it's a good life lesson to see what happens if you uh, make too bold of a prediction. Now, I've made predictions in the past. If you remember, I made a prediction back in, I think it was 2011, that if QE3 uh, came through, we'd go through $100 on silver. Of course, I was wrong, and uh, I had no idea... Uh, the extent to what the powers that be would do, the, the bag of tricks they had. And that's okay. That's no big deal. I'm still convinced I'm right. I think these things are ultimately going to play out. But I could be wrong. Um, we could go into some new system that no one's ever thought of. That's quite possible. Uh, we can always be wrong. But uh, it's, a, it's a life lesson in that uh, you have to be very careful about making very bold predictions because if you make a bold prediction and you don't back off from it when it looks like you're wrong, then you, you kind of start to get into a cultist sort of thing. So we're going to see that when we look at uh, the Bo Polney interview. But I want you to look at this chart because this is an important stock index that most people don't even look at. And one of the reasons why this is an important index is because the Dow Jones Utilities average traditionally, now I'm not going to say that that holds today because uh, there's a lot of rules that are being broken that, that had held for, um, you know, a hundred years. We had Merrill Lynch, you know, we had companies that, that existed for a hundred years. I just recently... Uh, uh, at my work had to deal with a uh, customer who had a Nortel switch and if you if you know the history of Nortel uh, it's a Canadian offshoot of Bell actually it goes back to the invention of the telephone and they went bankrupt and uh, I actually had to get a 10 year old uh, phone system working it was quite a challenge but the thing is is that things can change dramatically and uh, things that have been around for a long time can can go away. That can happen. But uh, looking at the utility average, you have to understand that traditionally the utility average has always been kind of a proxy for bonds. And the reason why is because utilities tend to pay a dividend. Now, if the laws and rules on dividends change, then of course that's going to change that uh, relationship. But generally, uh, utilities are the highest dividend paying stocks and so therefore when uh, when bonds tend to yield very very poorly uh, that gives an impetus to the price of utilities stocks if that makes sense because if you had uh, say a, a power company that was paying you a dividend of 3.6 percent um, if the Fed pushed interest rates down to some zero number or negative number, then obviously that company's stock that's paying a regular dividend on its uh, utility, that utility stock, is going to be more valuable. So it's going to go up. Now this is going to come into play because this interview with uh, Bo, Bo Polney uh, is dealing with his predictions that these markets are going to go in different directions. Now, they could go in different directions. I've made that prediction many times. But uh, if you listen to the interview, we're going to see here in a second when he talks about how all the indices have not made new highs. Well, that's clearly not the case with the Dow utilities. You can see here. Uh, now, this may be a repeat of 2008. You can see I, I drew an arrow here to show you that in 2008, the Dow utilities average... Uh, actually did a spike top above its old highs and then crashed. Now that this could be that sort of thing right here. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the arrow. Uh, anyway, consider that an arrow. So this this top, this new high in the Dow utilities, it could be this right here, and we could crash down, and uh, that's quite possible. But 
if you look at these two trend lines, I've drawn them in. This, this top trend line is the trend line of the Dow Utilities, and this lower trend line is a trend line of gold. So you can see that gold, even though it's had um, a massive bull catch up, and that's in this phase here, uh, right in here, right in this area here, you can see that gold did a massive catch up and then of course made its top and corrected. But it really caught up to bonds because again, the utilities are a proxy for bonds. So we're gonna come back to this chart when we're listening to this uh, interview. Before we do that, I want to get to just an example news story uh, I don't have all of the documentation on this. I pulled it up I, I, and uh, I have the information, but this is uh, just something I came across on the front page of Yahoo. So in the past, during past elections, and one thing that they do is that they uh, recondition people to accept a different history than what they remember and people forget the way things were in the past. But in the past, you didn't have the front page of a news uh, website or the front page of a financial website with a blatant editorial. You can see this here. This is the this is the headline on Yahoo Finance: Latest Trump Whopper. America is poor. So that's incredible. Uh, the front page of Yahoo is saying Trump is a liar. Now, the things that are going on with the terror attacks and there are so many things you can't even keep track of. I'm torn between two positions. Uh, the first position is that Trump's a total outsider and all of them are terrified of him and uh, they're trying to stop him at any cost. And then it goes all the way uh, to the other side of the spectrum, which is Trump has already been decided to be the leader. And this is a show to try to get him elected. I, I can't decide. But uh, the argument here made by this Rick Newman character, I did research on this. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the figures, but basically they uh, counter Trump's argument that America is poor or getting poor by uh, the household disposable income. Now, if you go and do what I did, which is research this, and you'll find some OECD sites, and unfortunately I lost the charts and they didn't come back up again. But what I found was uh, that when I pulled the OECD household disposable income, it was true that the United States was number one. But when you pulled the income disparity, and it was one out of 36, when you pulled the income disparity, it was actually 35 out of 36. So this number here, this $44,000 of disposable income per household, this ties directly into the stock market. So if you don't own stocks, you're not participating in this average. Uh, it's skewed because, and that actually goes into what Trump is arguing, that under Obama, the last eight years of Obama, and of course the eight years under Bush, that the rich got richer uh, and the poor got richer, but the middle class got poor. And that's exactly what's happened. Now that's the demographic that Trump is appealing to. So I don't know. You decide for yourself. I cannot decide whether the entire establishment is aligned against Trump because they want to stop him or the entire establishment is aligned against Trump because he's the shoe in I don't know we'll see it's gonna be interesting now let's get to this I, I'm gonna use the term bold pony and you're gonna see why because in this interview uh, it's just it, it kinda comes out that you, you don't want to be this bold in your predictions because you could be wrong. So let's watch this. Hello, everyone, and welcome in to the show here. We got Bo Polney of Gold 2020 Forecast. He's a very popular guest. He's made some serious waves in the investment community, and he's had a lot of successful calls, and he's provided us with a great deal of insight. Now, we're going to talk to him today about what, he sees going forward, he has some important times in his timeline uh, regarding the stock market, regarding precious metals. But uh, at the same time, we do want to talk a little bit about what we've discussed in the past regarding some of the calls that might not have gone as planned or 
uh, maybe the way we would have perceived them to be planned, and specifically the stock market, which has not crashed, but March has been a relatively good month for stocks, and gold has come up as well. So we, we got a lot to talk about today, uh, but first, I want to say hello, Bo Polney, thanks for joining me today. Ken, great, great being here. Thank you again for calling, and uh, yes, I look forward to speaking with you today. Uh, I think very exciting times for our future here, so thank you. Bo, let's start off with what we had discussed about in our interview about a month ago, just under a month ago, we did this interview. Actually, we recorded it a month ago, but released it a few days later. So we talked about stocks and gold. Now we talked about them going in an inverse direction. Now this month we saw gold go up along with silver pretty substantially. And you, you did say that we would see that, uh, but I, we were also under the impression that stocks would be going in the opposite direction. And you know, with the events of Janet Yellen's decision not to tighten interest rates, uh, we saw gold take off. We saw also stocks go up. We're up to 2016 highs with the stock market. So I, I want to get your thoughts on this and give you an oppor opportunity to just respond to the events that we've seen over the last month. So Ken, um, great question. My question back to you is give me one market that's made a higher high. And mm. none. Okay, so what kind of a trend are we in, Ken? Okay, so I'll give you the market right here, Bo. The Dow utilities average, it's made a higher high. It's right there. Um, it actually made a higher high. Uh, you can see this line here, 2016. That's the last line we have in this chart. And we were all the way around 560 or so. And you can see we're at 6, 660. So the Dow utilities average has made a higher high. had a lot of successful calls and he's provided us with a great deal of insight now we're going to Sorry. me today ken great great being here thank you again for calling and uh yes i look forward to speaking with you today uh, i think very exciting times for our future here so thank you bo let's start off with what we had discussed about in our interview about a month ago just under a month ago we did this interview actually we recorded it a month ago but released it a few days later. So we talked about stocks and gold. Now we talked about them going in an inverse direction. Now this month we saw gold go up along with silver pretty substantially. And you, you did say that we would see that, uh, but I, we were also under the impression that stocks would be going in the opposite direction. And you know, with the events of Janet Yellen's decision not to tighten interest rates uh we saw gold take off we saw also stocks go up we're up to 2016 highs with the stock market so i, I want to get your thoughts on this and give you an oppor opportunity to just respond to the events that we've seen over the last month so ken um great question my question back to you is give me one market that's made a higher high and none, none. Okay, so what kind of a trend are we in, Ken? Uh, well, we would be in a, well, I'll, go, I'll let you answer that. It's a bear trend, yeah, okay. okay? So the point is lo higher, lower highs and lower lows are a bear trend, period, okay? So we were looking for a turn on the stock market at the very early part. The last interview we did was on the 24th of February. And you're correct, we were expecting gold to go up. Um, actually, from that time point, gold was trading, I think, at 1230. Uh, and it went, went up to, I believe it was uh, high. Actually, we can go to our slide here. Um, let me pull that up. Yeah, so on uh, the 24th, we did our interview. Gold was trading at 1230. It rose following, and it broke out of what we call a pennant formation. It went up to 1287. So basically, we had a 57 dollar rise. Um, so it did go in the direction we wanted. Again, was it with the power we were looking? Uh, secondly, uh, with the stock market, as we just talked about, there is not one market from any indices, the Dow, S&P, 
NASDAQ, neither of them have made any form of higher highs. They're all lower highs. Um, and all that's happening is everything is topping. And the last interview we did, we never put a time frame on the interview we did with you. I just said soon, very soon. Um, so we're, you know, we're three weeks into the interview here, and uh, I don't see any more energy that the energy markets could have to the upside. And everything's going to turn and blow up really, really soon here. Okay. Yeah. No. Definitely. And that's. Uh, I, I'm glad you were able to clarify those things and uh, answer them so because I think you can hear the uncomfortable nature of this interview because we're talking about a person who's made very bold predictions and they're starting to look to be wrong um we know no one knows the future only god knows the future and uh, it's quite possible that the federal reserve could reverse course uh, adopt a uh, policy of negative interest rates and we could see gold and the stock market rally into new highs both of them into new highs uh, now I've talked about how they're going to reverse and I and I believe they will when this system collapses but we don't know when that's going to happen and to say that you know when that's going to happen to set a date I've, I've covered before the people who do uh, things with prophecy and they make predictions about uh, we've reached this date in Bible prophecy and such and such must happen by such and such date uh, we had uh, 88 reasons for rapture in 88 we we've had a million people and a million cults uh, formed by people insisting that they know they're right, that this date is this, and then they turn out to be wrong. I think you're kind of seeing that. I think you could hear that in that interview. Um, I no longer make predictions. I just look at the charts. So let's go and look at some of the charts here. Uh, this is a really interesting page here. This is from more research, and you know I uh, go to the more research charts. If you remember for those of you who read Investment, uh, the I'm sorry, it, not Investment Biker, that's the Jimmy Rogers book, but the, the original one was uh, Market Wizards and the interview with Jimmy Rogers. And uh, one of the questions was, what's the first thing you look at in the morning when you get up? And the answer was the commodities markets. I look at the commodities markets. And uh, the interviewer said, you're hired. And so let's look at these long-term more charts because we can't say where things are going to go with any certainty because none of us can predict the future. We can just kind of look at the past and see where things have been. So I'm going to roll a few of these charts and try to make a prediction. Now, if you look at the monthly S&P, you can see the volatility that I talked about. Now, this volatility has already superseded the reflex volatility that we had in the 2000.com bounce. You can see it really only hit here. It was really only a 50% correction. You can see this spike here was about a 75% correction. This is about an 80 to 90% correction we're here. Um, so are we going down or into new highs? We don't know yet. Uh, again, here is uh, the S&P 500. Here's the Dow Jones, same sort of volatility. Here's the transports, and I pointed this out the other night. Uh, incredible volatility, something that really is unprecedented except for the financial crisis that we had in 2008. Here's that utility chart. If you remember, Bo Pony, I'll call him Bold Pony, made the prediction, uh, or the statement actually, that there is no chart that is making new highs. Well, this chart is making new highs. And again, this is the utilities average. And we're going to show you when we get to the interest rates. That's the Nikkei and the DAX and the NASDAQ. So you can see the NASDAQ is a little bit different. Uh, it had a run up. And there were a lot of people that shorted companies back in here in 98. I shorted uh, some companies back here in 98. And you can see what happened. Uh, we went from 1,500 on the NASDAQ up to 5,000. 
Now, we're consolidating at 5,000. Uh, could it go higher? Absolutely, it could go higher. Here's the Russell 2000, same type of volatility. Uh, S&P 200, you can see a little bit wider index kind of faltering. Here's the, uh, the VIX index, and I pointed out the other day that that's really just a downside volatility index. Now, this is very important. This is the 30-year T-bond, which is not trading anymore, but this is a virtual index. But you can see, if you remember in December of last year, Janet Yellen did the first minor increase in interest rates for the first time in many, many years. But you can see the reaction here, that uh, right there on that line, see that line right there? That's January 1st, 2016. Look at the rally in the bonds. So even though the Fed raised interest rates, the interest rates on the long-term bond actually collapsed. Same thing on the 10-year. It gets a little weaker on the five-year. Then you can see the Euro dollar, which is a proxy of the T-bill kind of falling off here. So a compression in the interest rate yield curve. Now the, the gold chart here, you can see the, the takeaway from this, really for anyone that's honest, is that gold is now bouncing back in a bull market. Uh, this goes back to 1975, and you can see a huge spike, and then a very, very long-term recovery. We're talking 1979 all the way to uh, really 2005 before the trend is broken. So this is a 26-year bear market. Now, is this a bear market? Well, certainly not in the terms of the direction of this chart. Silver, on the other hand, uh, you can see that silver has really taken much more of a beating than gold did. But in my opinion, as far as real money, that just makes it a better investment. Platinum, very interesting chart. Palladium, again, another interesting chart. Copper, uh, this was the one we're talking about with the commodities guys going under. It has not made the projected lows, and I really do think it will touch down to these lows. Uh, Swiss franc, uh, these are the currencies. I don't have time to go into them. I want to talk about a, a few other charts here. First of all, the uh, Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar index is absolutely fascinating. You can see here that uh, again, this is uh, going to be um, on the dollar quotes. So back in 2001, uh, the Canadian dollar was worth about 63 cents on the dollar. You can see the rally all the way up to 110. And then during the financial crisis, a crash all the way down to 75 cents, a rally over a dollar. And look where we just recently hit here all the way down to about 68 cents. The Canadian dollar is only worth 68 cents. So what does that tell you that this move here in the financial crisis from here to here is dwarfed by this move from here to here? Something big is going on in Canada. Uh, nothing quite so large in the Australian dollar. The peso you can see is getting very, very weak. Uh, that would bode well, I would say, for a Trump presidency, uh, someone who's going to take it to Mexico. Uh, here's the dollar index in the short term. We want to look at the dollar index in the long term. You can see long term wise, drawing your trend lines, the dollar is still in a downtrend. Crude oil uh, has completely collapsed, making new lows with what appears to be a dead, dead cat bounce. We can't say at this time. Uh, so... That's enough for the charts, but I just wanted to show you that to point out that anybody who is making very bold predictions, uh, they're setting themselves up for trouble. And the reason why is because if they're wrong, or I should say when they're wrong, they're going to have to do a retraction. And they're either going to have to admit, well, I was wrong because I thought this was the case and it wasn't the case, or I thought this was the result and it wasn't the result, but they're basically going to have to eat some crow. Now, if you're too proud to eat crow and admit that you were wrong, then what you're going to do is you're going to try to alter reality to try to 
make people believe that you were right even when you were wrong. And that's a very dangerous thing when people start doing that because that's when you start to get into a cult. And I'm not saying that Bo Pony, Bold Pony, or whatever his name is, that's what he's doing, but he's getting on the edge of that. You can hear it in the interview. And we'll talk to you next time.